could give me your, your name and your title. My name is Nils Harry. I'm 66 years old. I have served as associate professor at the chemistry department of University of Copenhagen for 40, 42 years. And uh, I have just retired recently on September 1st. And But I still have my office and some students left and my research is still running. So on screen, you would be Associate Professor of Chemistry at Copenhagen Emeritus. University. Emeritus. Emeritus. I'm retired. Emeritus Professor. Emeritus Associate Professor I Emeritus. Right, right. Okay, there's a limit to what we can put it, but it, but yeah, you are Associate you're Emeritus. I'm retired, yeah. it doesn't matter. I okay. still have my office. I see. Still there. Yeah, okay. Um, and your specialism while you were, when you were there, what was? Well, I'm, uh, this is photochemistry. Chemistry and with light, chemical processes induced by light, and physical consequences of light absorption, which is kind of abstract eventually, but photosynthesis is an example of, of a photochemical reaction. Mm -hmm. So tell me, I mean, just doing general questions first, okay. as those I mentioned yesterday. Yeah. Okay. Um, what do you think happened on 9-11? I don't know. The point is that we're dealing with the the killing of 3,000 people, and it has never been investigated as crime. There's never been a forensic investigation of that day. And whatever happened, we have to wait for that. But there are hundreds of circumstances and observations. Niels, Niels, which, yeah, Niels can you not tap your phone? Yeah, the tapping will be picked up on the mic. I beg your pardon, but it will be, so thank you. Do, I mean, let, just, uh, let me ask that question again. Do, what, what do you think happened on 9-11? I don't Do you agree with the official the official account? No, I don't. The official account is that America was attacked by 19 young hijackers uh, guided by Osama bin Laden. And uh, for once, we haven't seen one single forensic proof for this conspiracy theory to be correct. Not one bit of proof? Not one bit of forensic proof. But I thought there was actually quite a lot of facts out there. Well. Why haven't we heard about them? I haven't. But I have heard about and seen and been involved in the production of hundreds of observations and facts and circumstances which violates the official conspiracy theory. And that's why we are waiting for a criminal investigation of the crime. And until this occurs, we should stay open for whatever it will lead us. So you don't believe, what do you think happened to the Twin Towers? Would you, how do you, why they do you were, think they, they were the, the three high-rise, you know, there were two airliners, but there were three skyscrapers and all three of them unambitiously were taken down in controlled demolitions. Controlled demolitions? Meaning that you take down the building by the application of incendiaries, and explosives. And is there evidence that explosives and incendiaries were used? Plenty. Yeah. In abundance. And who would want to plant those? Oh, this is we. I don't know. I'm not talking about people or politics. I'm talking about facts and observations, physics and chemistry. But it could, what, it could be the builders put it in when they, when they built it? Well, why, if, if in case, why, why don't the government tell us that? Mm -hmm. They could just tell us it. And if you believe this, this happened in the 1950s for the towers, okay, why don't they tell us? But why, why would anyone want, I can't see why anyone would want to plant a, a bomb in a building to kill American citizens. Why would Neither do I. I mean, this is beyond my realm of expertise. It seems as some people might say absurd. Well, some people. 
But I'm <laughs> some people have difficulties with see what they actually see. And what you should do, if you have problems, is just to watch. There were three high rises, but there are only two airliners. Now you don't have to have a PhD in physics to count the three, okay? So what happened to building seven? Which was roughly a little less than half the height of the Twin Towers. It collapsed on its own seven hours after the North Tower. And the way it came down unambitiously indicates that it was a controlled demolition. There is no way a steel framed high riser can come down due to fire. And it's very easy to understand because over history there's been many fires in steel framed high rises and each time you're doing an experiment and this is what we scientists we love experiments. Each fire in a steel frame high riser was an experiment. And you make an observation when the fire is over, the building is still there. This even happened in the, in the Twin Towers and many other high rises. Each time you're drawing the conclusion, the building did not come down. The experiment is being repeated many, many times. And in science, when you have repeated the experiment over and over again, you come to a conclusion, and the conclusion is that a steel framed high riser does not collapse due to fire. And that's it. We could stop here, basically. And the rest of it is uh, extra, is what we call supplementary information. Because just from these basic observations, you can conclude that a steel framed high riser does not collapse due to fire. And that's it. Because it looks like a controlled demolition. Listen, you didn't understand that we have made the experiment with the high rises and they do not come down due to fire. Well, that is one thing. Has there ever been a partial collapse of a high, a high rise steel frame building? A partial collapse? Has there ever been one? Yes, you know? and particularly what you call composite buildings where you both have concrete and steel frame. Then you, the, the concrete. Which collapses. bit collapses? Which, um, which bit collapses then? Does the steel frame actually collapse? It depends on with. But it does, I can tell you it does, because I think there have been clear examples where the steel frame building has collapsed. That's not true. Um, I'm sorry, it's not true. If you want to bring out an example, it is probably what we call composite buildings. What are your examples? No, there, are, there, are, there, are, there, are not, there are low rises where low rise steel frame have collapsed, there are high rise where the concrete center has stayed in, intact, but the, the steel frame outer. Has, has collapsed around it. Well, now we're going into details. Well, details are important. Are important to yeah, you. But you are aiming, in this case, you are probably aiming at the Windsor Tower in Madrid. But then that... That's one example where you can see yeah. exactly that. But the point there is, um, you are taking us into details. But the point there is that the upper 16 floors of the, of the Windsor Tower, there the floors were concrete and they went down and leaving alone the front, the steel front, completely unsupported. And that is not a steel frame, my friend. This is a composite building. You are not, I'm, I'm calling for an example of a genuine steel frame building which had collapsed due to fire. Mm -hmm. Please. Well, and they, they, they are, there are other examples where, where I haven't got all the, the names listed, but I, I, can, I can come back to you with that, with, with, with other buildings where they I appreciate have, that. Because the, Various various in international groups that look at engineering have have not high rise. I, I, I accept that well, there haven't been high rise, of course. but there have been other. The basic principle that's operating there, which is that when steel is heated beyond about six hundred degrees centigrade, it loses about half its strength, yeah. which is basic physics and science, which you like. But and when that happens, the building loses some of its stability. Yeah. If left that can cause the building to collapse. It, but it doesn't. And it, it does, in, in some low rises it has, and in most high rises where it's happened, there have been rare number, very few fires in high rises. Uh, the longest one where it's been, un, when it wasn't had, didn't have a fire service treating the fire, at WTC 7, where it's burned for seven hours and wasn't treated by the, the fire service, that did collapse. Not due to the fires. 
Well, that's your argument, but, but, it, but equally, to... be, equally, NIST had looked at it for, for, for many years and suggested that yes, it did. Look, it came down, building step, taking an example. But I want to dispute what you just said about, about uh, high rises collapsing due to fire. You, when you, for, for once, two points here. When you, of course, when you have a steel roof, of course it comes down. But British steel, which is uh, respected, or was, it's not called British steel anymore, but they did actually a series of experiments. Cutting some scale. experiments. Exactly, the cutting some experiments. Mm -hmm. Over seven years, over eight years, they made seven controlled experiments where they built eight-story, full-scale steel frames and burned them under complete control demolitions, meaning that you could actually recall, recall temperatures within the steel. In the worst case scenario, they had temperatures of 1100 degrees. How long did they have them for? 11 hours. 1100, please wait, 1100 degrees yes. centigrade within the steel. At that point, steel is spaghetti, boy spaghetti, but the building remains standing. And how long did they have those temperatures for? Hours. But No, this is important. How, how long do you know how long they had, they had them at that temperature for? I, we can go and look up the... I, I would suggest you do have a look at that at some point because because yeah. that is an example where the fact that actually is very important because I did go to the the, the building research in, in, institute that, that carried that out, mm. spoke to the engineer who carried that out. Yeah. And if you look at that, those papers in detail, you'll see how long they, they were held at that temperature for. Let me finish the point. Yeah. Let me finish the point because it's quite important because it's a fact. Yeah. Because when you're, when you're looking at an experiment like that, it isn't just a matter of the temperature reaches. Is how long it's held at that temperature for. It goes the other way. And I think way. you'll find it's more than just a couple of It hours. goes the other way round. It is you who have to produce an example of a steel framed high riser ever having collapsed mm. due to fire. Mm. And you cannot. Mm. And the Star Tower stood for 56 minutes. Mm. Come on. Mm -hmm. and there has been no reported example of steel framed high rises collapsing due to fire. And it was not building seven. The process so, is clear. The, the example of a high-rise is, is right, there hasn't been until WG7, there is no high-rise steel frame building having okay. collapsed. So let's However, the process is clear, the example you give in the carding experiments is wrong because you, you incorrectly state the number of hours that it was held at that temperature. No. Nope. And if you have a look, you'll find that it didn't have a threat that temperature for very long. It didn't um, collapse, okay. The Carlington fire. That's they because you need to look at how long it was held at that temperature. Okay. You have to produce an example of a steel frame which collapsed due to fire. And you cannot. And that is the bottom line. Because it is not me who has to present a steel frame which has... So do you honestly believe that if you held a steel frame building and you have, steel, and you have temperatures that are over 600 degrees on whole floors, that you then, if you maintain that temperature for, for say seven hours, that the building will, will be intact. <laughs> but do, do you really believe that? Well, it happened. You, would yes. you be happy to stay in a building at the top of that, say a 50 floor building, with, in a standard steel frame building yourself, and then would you, would you not take the, the stairs and exit? Of course I would. You would stay in it, because you would no, know no, it's no, so no, safe. No, 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 no. Please, when you're saying, that the first building ever to collapse due to fire, a steel frame, was built in seven. Okay, that's what you said. Mm -hmm. And you're claiming that... It's not me, it's, it's, what, it's what others have, have claimed. I mean, it's what NIST have claimed, it's what, it's what other seven. authorities have said. You just said that building seven came down, okay. And you're talking about roaring fires. It is not true. It was minor, random, small fires. And that, but this is not personal. That was that based on. But that, that suggestion that small fires. You should look at the pictures. I have looked at the pictures. Very good. Then we must agree that they were small, random fires. I don't agree with that. No. Okay. But it doesn't matter. Well, it does matter because that's fairly important as to how big the fires were and how because widespread. You base, the, uh, you, you base that suggestion of, of the fires being small and uh, not over, over many, uh, many floors on, on looking at a few, some pictures. Yeah, that's your scientific analysis based on a few I'm pictures. I'm looking at pictures. 
Of course, yeah. I mean, no, I'm looking at all the, uh, the available pictures. I have read the mist report. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm expressing the conclusion of mist, mm -hmm. and these are small, random fires. But it is not important because the way the building comes down tells all. What the look of it. And the rate, the acceleration. The building is coming down in free fall. This is a number one observation. For Almost free fall. No. Nope. Actually. No, 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 no. No, no. It is straight free fall for almost 2.5 seconds. Almost. Yeah, exactly. Almost. And no, then, no, no, and then, no. And then it isn't at free fall. It is free fall. Yeah. It is, and it, it, no, you, you, you say it for the right yourself when you say it's almost free fall for, no, no, for no. about three seconds. That's, no, I, didn't say that. I didn't say that. Yeah. I did not say that. I mean, just to use the word almost. No, no. Yeah. For almost 2.5 seconds. Yes. It was within free I fall. See. Okay, I understand. You. It was within free fall. Yeah. For, all, for, say, a little more than two seconds. Okay? And it was completely free fall. It was at okay, within well, one percent yeah, yeah. of free fall okay, on so Manhattan. It's, so it's, it's not quite, yeah. And this yeah. is a completely unambitious proof that you have controlled demolition. Because at that time, when the whole building symmetrically goes from complete rest directly into free fall, at that moment, all the supporting structure must have been eliminated. And the last part of, at least the last part of the supporting structure must have been eliminated by explosives. Otherwise, you cannot see a complete symmetrical gun going down in free fall. Now, we are talking basic physics here. We are talking about Sir Isaac Newton, your countryman, professor of Cambridge. His tomb is in Westminster Abbey, and for good reasons.